Hello there. Welcome to yet another wonderful day with me, Bishop Mike Lodge, on Daily Word and Prayers. I bless the God of heaven who has made us to be able to see this wonderful day. Great is his faithfulness. And I bless you this day with the blessings of the God of heaven. And I bless you with all the things that be above. For the Bible said concerning Joseph that the Lord God Almighty blesses him. And same way I bless you this day. With the blessings of the heavens that be above. With the blessings of the deep that lieth under. I bless you with the blessings of the womb. And I bless you with the blessings of the breast. The blessings that be above, the realms that are above you that your hands cannot reach. The Lord command the blessings to come your way in Jesus' name. The blessings of the deep that lieth under, all hidden blessings, I release them upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blessings of the womb, which speaks of creative provisions, be given unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And above all, every desire of yours shall be met by the blessings of the breast, which makes provision for every child. And as a child of the kingdom, receive your provisions from the Lord by these decrees in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I welcome you to a wonderful time again with me as we still look more into the perfect law of liberty that's able to save our souls. Every man is a product of words. We are creations of words. We find also that we are a people who use words on a daily basis for communications. But what I've been trying to teach and make us understand is that we can use our words also for creative purposes. Not just for communications, in descriptiveness of situations, circumstances, and issues of life. But rather, that we should be able to use our words to create the kind of life we want to experience upon the face of the earth. It is by words Things are established. Never forget, the centurion, who was the Roman general, said, I say to one go, and he goeth, to another come, and he cometh. So what actually will come to you in life will be tied to what you call to come, and what will go away from your life will be determined by what you open your mouth to say go, and it will go. This only becomes a reality when you come into cognizance, into consciousness of who you are in Christ. Knowing that your words are very powerful. Today I want to push it some more and give us more reasons why we should come to know, acknowledge, and also begin to operate under the power of the spoken words. And I want us to bring ourselves to understanding of scriptures as we look at the word of a king. The word of a king. How powerful are those words that come out from the mouth of a king? For a text, I want you to read with me the book of Ecclesiastics Chapter number 8, verse number 4. It says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? What a word. Now, let's go on some more. 
with some more passages of scriptures. It is said to us in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 16, verse number 10. A divine sentence is in the lip of the king. His mouth transgressed not in judgment. A divine sentence is in the mouth of the king and he does not transgress when he sits to judge matters. My God. <laughs> and in Job chapter number 22, read in verse 28 through to 29, scripture records, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. And light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say by a decree. There is a lifting up. And he shall save the humble person. Mm. Now to wrap this up as reading the scriptures. In the book of Revelation chapter number 5, reading verse 8 through to 10, scripture records. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of the odors, which were the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and has redeemed us to our God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue, people, and nation. And thou hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Makush Kiba, please give me your ears as we look into the mystery of the word of the king. It is said that where the word of the king is, there is power. Which means the word of the king carries power. Power is that which has the ability to do things. Please never forget. You cannot have a king without having a kingdom. So every king is the commander-in-chief, is the sovereign ruler over a kingdom. Wherever there is a kingdom, there is a domain. And where there is a domain, there is a dominion that must be established over the domain and it's the king who is the ruler over the kingdom that has the dominion over the domain. He controls the entire territory. The people and the things in the land are under his control. That is why he has the right to rule, to control. To establish whatever he desires. And he rules by decrees. Kings rule by decrees. And what do you call a decree? A decree is an authoritative order. A decree is a command. A pronouncement that carries with this the force of the law. That is why scripture declares that where the word of the king is, there is power, which means it is backed up by the power of the law of the land, which is given to the king. Hear me, and hear me well. Locked up in you is greatness. Power, 
because the Lord has made you and I kings and priests. And we are to rule and reign on the earth. And if it means we are to rule and reign on the earth, it means the earth is our territory. The earth is our territory and we are to control our earth. The earth is our domain and we are to have dominion and exercise dominion over our domain, which is the earth. It also means that we must decide what happens in our earth. And that can only take place and happen if our words promulgate laws, decrees that will make our earth favorable unto us. I was listening to Pastor Chris Oyakilome and he said something very profound. He says, kings don't beg. <laughs> kings decree. Kings don't beg. Kings make decrees. They decree things into existence. They call things that be not as though they were. Following after the order of the almighty God who is the king of us who are kings made by him. Rulership is their destiny. And they are born to rule, they are born to reign. That is why when God made you and I kings before him to rule and reign over the earth, it is in our power to make decrees. And you make decrees by the spoken word. By the spoken word. I pray that as you hear the sound of my voice, you will take charge over your domain, over your territory, over your earth, over your life, and begin to rule and reign over your circumstances and situations. Please never forget, there is always this sinking feeling whenever you are not in control of circumstances and situations around you. Every time you feel helpless and hopeless, it's because you feel and think that the situation and circumstances of life have authority and rulership, control over you. But please never forget this. They are not the one that has the control. You are the one that has been given the control. You are the one that has been given the authority and the power, the right to rule. By keeping quiet when circumstances and situations are adverse, it means you are in agreement with that which has presented itself against you. Let's look at the life of Jesus. For when he came forth into the face of the earth, this was God that became man. So that man will know how to become God. He didn't come just for himself alone. He came to show us the pattern. For the Bible calls him the firstborn amongst many brethren. Which means, as he is, so are we. The way he existed and exhibited authority, control, and rulership over his earth when he was around, that is exactly how we are to exercise authority, rulership, and dominion over our earth. Every time Jesus faced lack and poverty he changed the situation he had control over lack over poverty over hunger when the people needed bread and were hungry he made bread available by the power of his decree Malukas. 
when there was a storm and the storm was raging because there were terrible winds. The Bible says he came forth, rebuked the wind, calmed the storm. He had control by the spoken word, which was his decree. When sicknesses and diseases were brought before him, and the men that were oppressed by these, he had control over them by the spoken word, by his decrees. And above all, when devils and even demons began to manifest wherever he was, he had control over them. And he cast them out by the power of his words, by his decrees. So also over death, he rebuked death and called the dead back into life by his decrees, the power of his words. I say this by the strength of the Lord. If you know who you are in God, you will exhibit so much authority and control that your world will respond to you the way you want it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The rules of engagement in the realm of the spirit is tied to who has the authority by reason of the power behind the words. What are your words declaring over your life, over your situations, and over your circumstances? I speak this by the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a king over your circumstance and situation. You are a king over the earth. For that's what the Lord God Almighty made you. He said, the Lord had made us to be kings and to be praised. For Jesus is called the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We are those kings that he is king over. Please hear this, therefore. Where the word of the king, a king is, there is power. And nobody can question him what he does. So if you will take your place and begin to speak now, power will back your words. The power of the Almighty will back your words. For he said to us when he rose again from the dead, Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you power. Power to do what? To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. He didn't say he gave you power just to go putting your feet physically, literally on serpents and upon scorpions. No. What he was saying is, I have given you power, authority, control as kings over all power of wickedness. That when you speak, they have no other option but to obey. Ah, Jesus at one time said, If I cast out devils and evil spirits by the power of my words, then know that the kingdom of God is come upon you. And that same power is in us. That's why the centurion who understood his office and his position as a general and as a man who had authority said to Jesus, I can say to one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. Why? I have the authority as a general. And they have no right but to obey. No other option but to obey. And so I am speaking to you now. Circumstances and situations of life will obey you. Will obey you. Will obey you. As you open your mouth to speak. That's why in Proverbs chapter number 16 verse 10 declares. 
he declares solidly a divine sentence. The word divine means godly, heavenly. The strength of the sovereign God is in the lips of the king. And his mouth does not transgress in judgment. When he sits to look at issues and he speaks over issues, what he speaks, scripture says, it's divine. That's why men of those days, when they give counsel, men upon whom the spirit of God rested upon, their counsel were like the oracles of the Lord. The real words, undiluted words, spoken by God. So when the king, who realizes himself to be king, begins to speak, his sentence, his lips, his words, declare such divine words that cannot be questioned by humanity. How much more by satanic forces, there be no power that can stand the power of the word of God. And so, there be no power that can stand your words as you begin to decree them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I wrap this up, he said, Thou, in the book of Job 22, verse 28, Thou, it's not another man, but thou, you, you and I, shall decree a thing and it shall be established my God unto thee. So the you that decrees a thing shall see that thing established to you yourself. So what you see happening as a reality in your life is tied to what is coming out of your mouth. So what are you decreeing? What are you saying? That's why kings don't make careless, I mean, careless statements. They don't make careless words. Because their words ought to be divine. They must not find themselves jesting unnecessarily. Because their words ought to be divine. They must not say words out of anger. Neither must they say words out of out of emotions or out of how will I put it sentiments they must say words that will not be questioned because they sit on the seat of judgment it says you shall decree a thing I said it again I say it again rather to decree means to authoritatively command to order a thing into existence to call to be what has not been to establish something that has not been established and all comes about by speakings the speakings of the king whatever the king decrees becomes a law that must be carried out. And men run around to make the decree of the king to be established. If you look at scriptures in the days of Daniel, when the king made certain decrees, there were people that hastily went forth to make the decree of the king to become a reality. In the days of Esther, in the days of Mordecai, when the king decreed a thing, even the king, scripture says his decree was established. Even when it had to do with the death of Haman, as he pronounced it, so it was. Why? He is the king. Nobody questions him what? Over what he has said. And there's so much power that backs it and makes it a reality. That's why the Lord says, I should say to you, when you become conscious of who you are, 
when you come into awareness of your creative consciousness, when you come into awareness of your I amness, your oneness with the Lord, understanding that you are not just a son of God alone, but you are a God upon the face of the earth because he has made you his son, then you realize how God said to Moses, I have made you a God over Pharaoh. That is why when Moses entered into Egypt, he had full control and authority over the entire land of Egypt. And God says that same power and authority and even a greater one is upon you under the sound of my voice. Thou shalt decree a thing. Job 22 verse 28. Thou shalt decree a thing. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. So the question is, what is that thing that you want to see established in your life? What is that thing you want to see established in your children? What is that thing you want to see established in your community? What is that thing you want to see established in your financial life? It is tied to your decrees. If you keep quiet over matters, matters will not change. When you cry over matters, matters will not change. When you worry over matters, matters don't change. But when you make decrees, they begin to change the matters. And circumstances begin to align themselves to make sure that which you have decreed becomes established. And it says, the light, the light shall shine upon thy ways. It shall no longer be darkness. It shall no longer be confusion. It shall no longer be in disarray and disorder. Your path will become part of light, which means things will become, will become better, will take upon themselves a glorious shape and form, and you will know what to do better. Look at what he says in conclusion. When men are cast down, when you see them, men being cast down, situations making men to be cast down, circumstances pulling men down, issues of life holding men in captivity and destroying them. He said, thou shalt not be afraid, thou must not weep, but thou shalt say, there is a lifting for me, a lifting up, a lifting up, a lifting up. So it means, therefore, your liftings are tied to the decrees that you make, the things you say concerning yourself. Don't call yourself down. Call yourself up. Don't speak yourself down. Speak yourself up. Don't use other men's circumstances and situations to conclude on your own life and your own case. Shout with me, my case is different. My case is different. My case is different. My case is different. Case is different. For when men are cast down, I will say there is a lifting up. And I speak over your life today. That lifting up is yours and will continue to be yours in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to give me these great affirmations and speak them out as I speak them today. Say with me, I am the blessed of the Lord. I make decrees and these decrees will be established because I am a king over the earth. And I say, it is well with my soul. I say, light shall shine on my path. No more confusion. I receive direction. I speak over my life and declare, my life is blessed. I am fruitful. I am great. I am mighty. I am victorious. And I am successful. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command and decree Every power that be contrary to life, go away from my life. Every power that is contrary to health, I cast you out of my life. Every power and force that is contrary to prosperity, to success, and to increase, I command in the name of the Lord Jesus, go and never come back in Jesus' name. And in this place, 
I command prosperity. I decree abundance. I decree success. I decree fulfillment. I decree greatness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord do you good at all times. Never forget to press the like button and also share with somebody. Every day for you, every day for you, every day for you will be a plus and not a minus in Jesus' mighty name. Till I come your way tomorrow, same time, which is 12 on the dot. God bless you and keep you. And remain rapturable in Jesus' name. Amen.